Hello and thank you for joining us. This video will serve as a brief introduction to a couple major research resources and databases that you will be using throughout your program. In particular, we will focus on CINAHL and PubMed, but we will also discuss the pros and cons of using Google or Google Scholar. We will not go into any search strategies in this presentation. To learn more about how to search CINAHL and PubMed, please see the videos dedicated to getting started with searching each resource. CINAHL and PubMed are two of the largest, most comprehensive research databases used by nurses. They are databases populated by millions of citations of biomedical research literature. Research literature is comprised of all the types of studies, reviews, and reports that have been published in journals, presented at conferences, or presented as theses. In many cases, the citations in these databases are linked to the full text version of the article. As University of Louisville students, you will be able to access articles from the thousands of journals we subscribe to. But because it is impossible for any institution to subscribe to every single journal in existence, you will likely need to use interlibrary loan to request articles from journals that we don't subscribe to from time to time. Finally, and most importantly, CINAHL and PubMed are indexed and vetted by professionals. What do I mean by indexing and vetting? First, let's focus on indexing. Indexing is the process done by librarians or information specialists that allow articles to be retrievable. This involves assigning major concept terms called subjects or subject headings to each article so that they are able to be retrieved when these search terms are used by someone. I've included this section of a CINAHL record to give you an example of what this looks like and the types of terms that might be attached to a record. Indexing is important because sometimes a word that you or I might think is a major concept of an article isn't included in the title or abstract or summary of the article. The title and abstract are the main parts of an article that get searched in a database or by search engines like Google or Yahoo. Let me give you an example to show you how important indexing is. Let's say I want articles focused on hand washing. So I use Google or another basic non-indexed search engine to search for the term hand washing. Because the search engine is not indexed, I would miss out on articles that don't use the words hand washing, but might use words like hand hygiene or hand disinfection or hand sanitization in the titles and abstracts. This could exclude massive amounts of information, including comprehensive practice guidelines or systematic reviews, meta-analyses that cover the broad topic of hand hygiene, but also include important sections on hand washing. As a result, I'd have run the risk of missing out on a lot of useful information. I'd also be worried that the results I got wouldn't be as reliable, which brings us to vetting. Vetting requires the appraising of all journals and publications indexed in a research database. They're being appraised for reliability and quality. In other words, PubMed and CINAHL won't include citations from a journal that they feel is low quality or has low quality research or is otherwise compromised. This results in much more reputable, high quality research included in each database. Predatory journals are non-peer-reviewed publications that often require you to pay to publish in them, and they also involve little to no editorial process. You should never, ever pay a journal to publish your work. Reputable journals are peer-reviewed, meaning other professionals in your field will view your work to determine its validity. Also, any reputable journal should allow free article submissions because that journal will be sustained by the subscriptions that are generated by publishing quality research. Sometimes predatory journals are so poorly reviewed that they will publish literally anything that is sent to them, which means they sometimes reach full-on absurdity. My favorite example is a neuroscientist who wanted to see if he could get this paper published. It is on the clinical relevance of midichlorians, and for all you non-Star Wars fans, midichlorians are the mystical entities that give Jedi Knights their powers in the Force. This paper was riddled with references to Jedi, lightsabers, and often included movie quotes as total non sequiturs just shoved into paragraphs. 
authors cited in the reference section included characters like Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker. Boba Fett and Han Solo also make an appearance. In short, the paper was designed to be as absurd as possible, to the point that a middle schooler could probably tell there was something seriously wrong here. And yet, it was published in four separate journals. The point of this long and unnecessarily nerdy story is to illustrate that these kinds of articles and journals would not be found in Sinal or PubMed because they are vetted, but they would absolutely come up in a Google, Yahoo, or Bing search. And I'm not saying this to rag on Google either. Google is great for day-to-day questions like looking up movie reviews or recipes or catching up with the news. It is horrible for research purposes. Anyone can create a site about anything and pass it off as believable. I could make page about how rubbing sand on your head every day will prevent brain cancer. Or more dangerously, I could write about how the compounds or supplements that I'm selling will prevent cancer, and with a little editing, I could make it look like a legitimate research article. I could even start a journal just to publish this research on how great my products are, and to the untrained eye, it might look real. And even if you are skilled enough to tell the difference between this junk science and real research, why bother? Why not start with proven reliable resources instead? You are a University of Louisville student, so you have access to thousands of medical resources. Don't waste your time digging through junk papers and advertisements and product pages and personal blogs when you can get right into the good stuff with Sinal or PubMed. One caveat regarding Google. There is a product called Google Scholar that can be useful only when you're really, really stuck. It's the same as Google, it just filters out everything that isn't a journal article, a book, or a government report, like Morbidity and Mortality Weekly reports from CDC but it is not indexed or vetted. It will not filter out any predatory journals or poor research. So use at your own risk. I'd always, always search CINAHL and PubMed first, and if I'm not getting anything, give Google Scholar a try to see if you can get any leads. Before we go, a couple of final thoughts on CINAHL and PubMed. No database is entirely comprehensive. No database will include every journal on the topic that you need, so it's always important to search more than one research database. Second, they have different target audiences. CINAHL was made by nurses for nurses and allied health professionals, so everything included in CINAHL will focus specifically on these fields. PubMed focuses on all of biomedicine, including veterinary science, surgical specialties, food science, and more. As the largest biomedical database in the world, it does have a large collecting of nursing journals indexed, so it still fits your needs. Both databases have a lot of overlap in their indexed journals, but they also have some that the other doesn't have. For instance, PubMed has very few journals on infusion and intravenous nursing. That's too specific for PubMed. CINAHL, on the other hand, has a few more, like the Journal of Infusion Nursing, because it is a nurse-focused database. If I only searched PubMed, I would have missed many articles on infusion nursing that would have been available in CINAHL. Now that you have an idea of what CINAHL and PubMed are, it's time to learn how to search them. Please take a look at my next videos on getting started with searching CINAHL and getting started with searching PubMed. If you have any questions about anything discussed during this video or any other library resource or service, please feel free to contact me anytime.